Hi guys, um, how are you guys doing today? I'm so excited, I'm filming in our new office, which I did a tour of on Instagram. Um, and I'll probably do a tour later, something a little more official, but um, I wanted to make this video and I'm listening really hard to hear if my daughter wakes up. She's on the other side of the house, but um, it's her nap time. So I wanted to share something uh, that is really important to me and it's kind of the basis of why I built Tiny Nefesh Village. And um, I wanted a place for work from home moms to have community and to have connection. And eventually I want it to be stay at home moms and work from home women in general. But for now, it's really focused on work from home moms because we get so like overwhelmed by life sometimes, I think. And statistics show we as women kind of carry the burden of our families, but we also have to bring in income. And so I designed Tiny Nefesh Village. And along with that, I wanted to make a free guide to explore. There's a lot of women talking about, should I, shouldn't I work from home? If I do work from home, what job should I choose? And I created a guide for that. And um, I also wrote a blog about tips for working from home. And I really wanted to make a video sharing all of that because I feel like it might be good to really talk about, should you be working from home? Is that a viable career for you? What I like about it, what I don't like about it, the flexibility of it, but also the tips for you who do work from home, who've either just started or are feeling burnt out or are trying to figure out like how to make it work a little better for themselves. Um, and so I want to share some ideas about should you work from home. So um, in the guide, I really talk about... Um, kind of the basics of things to consider for yourself. I don't really answer the question, should you work from home for you? And it's even a great self exploration for if you already work at home, because when I was working on this, I was like, thinking about the boxes, like, is this a viable thing long term for me? And I believe it is I we chose this because I was really sick during pregnancy. So it came sooner than we thought it would. Um, and even for the church plant that my husband and I have that we will be doing, I am doing a lot of administrative stuff from the home and we'll probably continue to do that because we're going to homeschool. But we had our daughter sooner than we planned. So all of it came earlier and I was really sick and going to my actual jobs. I was working a couple of them when we got pregnant and I had to cut them out one by one and I was sick the whole time. And the same with this one, like today I have a really bad migraine, but the fact that I can work from home means I can kind of put it at bay until, and when I do that, I can film or I can write. And then if it comes back, I know that I can get back to it tomorrow and there's no one like checking my progress, except for my teaching job, which I'm going to talk about later in the video. But um, some things that you really need to think about if you're working from home or thinking about working from home is how much accountability and structure do you need? If you need a lot of accountability and structure from an outside force to make sure you're getting your work done, working from home might not be the best option for you. Um, if you kind of need a mid-level, there are a lot of work from home jobs that work for other companies. Like I work for myself, but I also teach for VIP Kid. And obviously I set the hours I want to work with them, but it has to be in their schedule because it's in China. And then I have to follow like some of their rules, even as a contract person. And that's totally okay, but I have to work within that structure. And so that does provide a little structure. And if you need that, finding a company to work in customer service for from home or doing some transcription work from home or something like that might be the better option than trying an MLM or building your own freelance agency or building your own creative entrepreneur, whatever you're doing for yourself. Um, doing something for an already established job might be the better option. Um, I like a mix of both. I like the accountability, but I like doing the job that I feel called to. So that's one thing to consider. Um, along with that is where does your motivation come from? If you can be intrinsically motivated, like I want to do this because I want to see it done, then you can succeed on your own at home. You can be flexible. You can do all that and still your work gets done. So you get 
you financially can contribute to your family. But if not, if you can't motivate yourself and you need like outside motivation, working for someone else is probably your best bet, even if that's in the home. Um, but definitely thinking about working outside the home might be an option. And the next one is thinking about community and connection. Do you want people around? Do you not want people around? Working from home, let's be real guys, working from home can be so isolating and so lonely. And so unless you're intentional with your connection with other people, it doesn't always happen. Um, I was so sick yesterday that I didn't go to church. Now we had some people over last night, so I had connection there, but there are times where I don't leave my house for like a few days at a time or whatever. And you have to really think about that. Is that a life you want to live? If you're home taking care of your kids and working and you don't have to go to an office or you don't have to, whatever it is, it can be lonely. And if you're an ex extrovert or you need connection, like really consider this aspect of working from home because it doesn't easily lend itself to that community and connection unless you're intentional. And this is hard even on introverts like myself. I like time alone, but sometimes I get, especially when I'm home with a child all day, I want adult conversation. Um, so really think about that. Those are the three biggest things to think about when choosing if working from home is right for you and your family. Um, some smaller things to consider is do you have kids and how child care affects everything. And another is the ideal schedule for your family. If you need to work a nine to five because your spouse works something different or needs you home at the same time or whatever, you have to think about that in terms of are you working for someone else that needs you to work seven to six or seven to whatever, um, whether that's in the home or out of the home. Um, and you really have to think about what works for your kid's schedule and your partner's schedule. And then another one is income needed. Do you need your income to be steady right away? If so, building your own business is not going to be the way to go, whether it's an MLM or your own freelance business. If you need that income right away, a lot of these don't lend themselves to that. You have to work, put in that effort and then see the results. So if you're flexible, if you're willing to build on your own, if you have the time to do a startup or an MLM or freelance business, by all means, do it. But if not, really consider what works best for your family. For my family and the needs that we had, working for VIP Kid as an ESL teacher while I built my business was our best option. And there are other online schools that I'm applying for now while I continue to build um, my business in, in a new direction. And um, part of that is because I just love teaching. So even as I build my business, I want to be teaching. I want to be doing those things. And maybe when I start teaching my own kids in homeschool, that won't be the case. But part of it too is about what do you love to do? Because if you're just like, isolated and you decided to become a transcriptionist and you don't really like it now you, but you did it to stay home think about the benefits does that outweigh the choice you've made um part of why working from home is so great is because you can find harmony and rhythm in the day-to-day -day life so that you are living a life you love doing something you love to do from home and if that is transcription for a medical company great do that that's fantastic if it's building your own business do that. I think I love this quote from Dolly Parton, never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. And that's what I want to help women do is build their life, this life that they love through working from home, but also helping them see if that's the right choice for them. And so let's say you've decided, yes, this works for my family. This is what we need to do. What kind of job should you choose? Like, that's the next step. Like, what do I do? Um, Working for another company in a remote position is really good for those people that need income to be steady because those companies are established. It's great for those people who need more structure, who need more accountability. Um, and it's great if you have access to childcare because there are a lot of companies that won't let you have your children around. When I teach, my husband has to watch our daughter because I... Um, 
am not allowed to have her in the room with me when I teach for, for this particular agency, unless it's an extreme emergency, but I don't recommend it. Um, for one of the other schools I'm looking at, that's not as big of a deal as long as your child's not disrupting your classroom. So think about that. If you have access to childcare, or if you're going to make enough to like have someone come into your home, that's going to be infinitely less expensive than like taking them to daycare. Um, Working for another company from home in a remote position is a fantastic option. The uh, second option is an MLM. So this is an already established company where you love the product. So I work for an MLM, um, a health sciences company, and I work for them because I love the products, because I feel better having a switch to their products than I have ever before. They have a vitamin that I actually can process because historically I physically am not able to process um, multivitamins that are commercially made, which has been a really big problem my whole life. So finding this company, finding this group of people is great. This is great for if you need a community because most MLMs are a team. You have a team of people, you work with an upline, and you are a team. Now you're building your own team too. So this is great too if you want an established product and company. Side note, tangent. MLMs are a legitimate way to build a business from home. Um, you have to put in the work. This is a lot like the next business I'm going to talk about. It's not going to be like a work from home position that's already established with a company where you're going to get paid right away. And yes, often you have to put in money, but it is a viable, legitimate option. Um, I have friends that work for so many different ones, like Plexus, Young Living, um, and they all love their product. That's where it starts. These companies bank on the fact that someone loves their product and is willing to help them sell it. And some companies do it better than others. They have a better idea of how to keep their customer balance with their work balance. And that's another thing about my company that I love is that they have an option for preferred customers, for people that just want the product because it is a fantastic set of products that do so much good. There's so much research behind it. I could go on and on. But the fact of the matter is some companies do it better than others. And I've worked for other companies that do really well and other companies that don't. Um, I've worked for three in my life. So this is my third. The other two did not last. Oh, I have worked for four. The other ones didn't last long. Um, but again, if you're willing to put in the work, they do work. They are a legitimate way to bring in business. I have done it with different companies, and I've left those companies for various reasons. Um, for one of them, I only signed up because I wanted the products at a discount. I'm going to be honest, and um, I don't regret it at all. Um, another one I left because I... Um, changed how I view the world and their products no longer lined up with what I believed and the other one I was never active in so I literally was in that one also for the product um the wholesale discount which was fine and now my mom just buys me my product from that company anyway so <laughs> that's how that worked but this new company I'm in I will be in for a good long haul because they've actually legitimately made a difference in my life. And that's what it's about. So if you have one of those, don't let the numbers scare you. If you're willing to put in the work, this is a viable option, but you have to put in the work, just like with any of these jobs. The last one is building your own startup business. There are many ways you can do this. This is for people who are creative and self-motivated, but you could do a freelance. If you're a graphic designer, you can start a freelance job where you do graphic design jobs for people. And whether that's starting on a platform like Fiverr just to get experience and get you out there, so be it. Um, this is for writers and authors and editors like myself. Uh, you can freelance transcription services. You can build your own freelance business around anything. I have a friend who is a web designer um, who does great work. I have a friend who, uh, I have friends who run their blogs as businesses and they're doing great things. I am building my coaching job um, and also the publishing side of that for my novels and books that I'm writing. Um, so Tiny Nefesh will cover all of that. And, um, you know, some people make money on YouTube. Freelance work, 
much like an MLM, you have to do the work. It's not just going to be thrown into your lap, and it will be hard. So if you need finances up front, this might not be the option for you or your family. But if you have some leeway, if you have some flexibility, then this might be a good option for you if you have a creative skill that you can market in that way. Now, the startup costs for um, a startup business vary depending on what kind of business, the materials you need, things like that. Um, and then much like an MLM, the making money takes time. So those are the three biggest categories that um, of work from home jobs is those remote positions for another company, working as a direct salesperson for an MLM, or starting your own startup business. And these are all viable work from home options. These are all things you can do to help support your family while still taking care of your kids. Like I said, I'm listening for my daughter to wake up from her nap, but she's home with me. If I have to work with her in the room, I do that. Um, I try to work during her nap time so when she's awake, I can like interact with her and play with her. Um, I'm also pregnant and so I have to rest a lot. But I can work from my couch. I can work from this office. I can work from my kitchen. I can work from the bedroom. Like I can work anywhere in the home. Um, I don't regret this choice at all. So those are things to really consider and to think about. Um, and... When it comes to working from home, sometimes we get so caught up in the day-to-day. -day. We get distracted by stuff that goes on in the home that we forget how to set up our schedule. And there are three tips I also want to give today about um, working from home. I'm going to take a drink of water. My throat is really dry. Got my mama bear mug. Mama bear, that's me. Um, when it comes to working from home, you've decided to work from home, you've picked the job, you've been working the job for however long, whether you're just starting or you've been in it for five years, but you're stuck, you're stagnant, or you've been trying to get your footing. These three tips can help you. And um, I'll put a link to the blog post below as well as a link to download that that um, work from home guide because there's really so much more material in that and the follow up emails that go with that that it is worth the download if you are considering work from home, if you've just transitioned to that or if you've been it for a while and you want to reevaluate everything, this guide is a really big help for that. Like, like I said, it helped me reevaluate is this still what's right for our family? And it is. And am I doing it in a way that is helpful? And I am. We've gotten stuck, but we're making changes that direction. And so your life stage affects whether or not this is what you should do or how you should go about doing it. And that's where this guide comes in. So download that guide. The link will be below. You'll, ha you'll have that link. And I'm going to link the blog post with the three tips that I have which fall into like really simple categories, self-awareness, scheduling, and setup. So self-awareness means knowing yourself. That's where this guide comes in. This is where you really evaluate you and your habits, knowing the important things that will impact your ability to work from home your work from home schedule, your work from home setup. Like, are you a morning person or a night person? Do you have to work a nine to five because that's what fits in your family schedule? What is your best time to get work done or to focus? Um, you know, this might affect whether you choose a day job that you have to work during the day or a night job or like me, VIP kid can be a morning or night job depending on who you are and where you live and how you choose to live your life. So knowing yourself, knowing your ability to have self-control, to self-regulate, to self-motivate, knowing your ability to be internally motivated, or if you need the structure of an outside job like an ESL company or a customer service job or a medical transcription job where you have a set schedule, a set job description, and you have to report to this person by Friday of every week or what have you. Um, like, I have an hour and a half to finish my feedback from my classes this morning. 
which I'll do after I film this video. And once that's done, my work day for them is done. But I had to show up for class at my start time and I have 12 hours to fill out feedback. That is a structured job that I do. When it comes to my job, I decide what task I have to do when. So I need to know self-aware wise, can I be flexible? Can I motivate myself? Am I gonna get this work done? And then I have to do it. So you have to know that about yourself. And then knowing your work environment needs. I can work with my daughter in the room most of the time. But sometimes I have to tell my husband, hey, I need you to take her to another room. I need you to take her to the store. I need you to take her to go get food. I have to be able to focus on this set work. Um, and that depends on what task I'm working on. Like I said, for my ESL company, she can't be in the room when I teach, so he wakes up early, watches her while I teach, and then I take over, and he goes and does his job. Um, on the weekends, I don't teach in the morning, so those are the days that I let him sleep. I get her up for the morning, I call it the morning shift, and we go from there. So you have to know yourself and know your needs for what you're doing. The next one, and the next two can like, go in any order. These are just tips to help you working from home. And the next one is scheduling. And there are a few things you got to consider, like who you work for. I work for VIP Kid and myself. If I work for myself, I get to do whatever I want. I'm filming this video 5.30 in the afternoon. Baby girl's taking her nap. After this, I have to do my feedback, go make dinner, and that's my evening. I also work for VIP Kid. So after I do this video, I have to write my feedback because that's part of my job. So know who you're working for. Also, you have to know, like, what if your kids don't nap? What if you can't put him or her down because she won't stop crying? What if your kids aren't in school yet? What if your kids are in school and you have to do drop-off and pick-up? These are all things that are going to determine how you set your schedule. These are also things that will determine if this is the right time for you to work from home and what kind of job you should have working from home. Um, you kind of have to adjust to the needs of your family and you have to figure out what's right for you. But really getting a schedule down is what's important. For me, it's been nap times. It's been after bedtime. That way I can take care of her while she's awake and then I can get my work done. And some days are lighter days than others. And the last tip is setup. So setup means like everything from the first two, the self-awareness and the schedule, but it also means the space that you have to work. I have, um, for VIP Kid, I always teach in the office because I have to have a predictable background. I have to have something that they know is coming. Now, Last week, my husband wasn't here, and I taught from our living room, which was fine because I really only taught a regular student that I have, and um, the last student I had wasn't a regular, but my husband was back, so I was back in the office, but I have to have a predictable background, and it has to be a quiet space, and it can't be like with a lot of craziness, so I teach from the office. When I do my work, if I'm filming like I am right now, I come to the office usually earlier in the day because I like having the light from my um, lamp, but also the light from the window. <laughs> it's the cloudiest, windiest day we've had in a long time in Oklahoma. The winds have steadily been between 20 and 30 miles an hour all day. Our house, sh our house shakes. It's great. So um, when I film, I come to the office. When I do my writing and stuff, a lot of it I do in the living room. Um, but you need to know how to set up your space for that. When I teach in for the other company, I'll teach from the office too because I want a predictable background that my students get to know um, so that it's not jarring if I'm in another place. Now, when I travel, that's, that's different because I do bring a temporary setup for while I travel and teach. But in my home, and I have to consider that setup too because that's part of working. Um, if you work for another company, though, like I do for an ESL company, your setup is going to vary. They're going to determine what tools you need. They're going to determine what software you need. They're going to determine if you need a separate office or not. They're going to determine a lot of that. So you have to really think about that. So those are my three biggest tips. Once you've decided this, yes, work from home is best for our family. 
this is the job I'm going to do. I found this MLM company I love. I'm going to start this business or I need money right now. So I found this customer service job I can take at home. That's going to determine a lot of this, but those are my three tips to make it really work for you is that self-awareness of what you need to make it work. Really getting a schedule down so that you do get the work done and then setting up your spaces how you need them to function for you in this space. So um, if you have any other tips for working from home or if you are if you are working from home or you've decided to work from home or you're a mom like my kids are driving me crazy because I work from home, let me know below. Um, like I said, Tiny Nefesh Village is really for work from home mamas to have a community because this can be a lonely job. And I've linked below that work from home guide and the blog post as well as Tiny Nefesh Village because it really is just about building this community of work from home moms who are just doing the best they can, working, taking care of their family, providing for their family, and doing all this so they can be home with their family. But I want them to find a life that they love. I want them to like love what they're doing just like I do. I want them to be happy with what they have in whatever field they choose and not say you have to set up this kind of business to make it work because we went over three really legitimate options for ways to make it work so I know this video is a little long and some of them probably end up will, will probably end up being a little long because they're gonna be tips about working from home and coaching and things like that so speaking of if you do join Tiny Nefesh there's a live coaching every month and a book club every month and this month's coaching is gonna happen sometime later this week it'll be on Facebook live in the group and then it'll go on to the website and it'll be up until the next month's coaching so that'll be out later this week probably Thursday or Friday and I'm covering um, I'm covering motivation and just qualification in the job you're doing so you won't want to miss that coaching it's actually really important there's been some debate amongst creative entrepreneurs about the topic of um, qualification and like this imposter syndrome and should you be doing it here and that comes to play in any of these careers we've talked about so that's what the first coaching is going to be about and so I really hope you join up so that you can get access to that coaching. There will be a probably a mini version of it that I will share on YouTube. But to get the full coaching and the materials that go with that coaching, you won't want to miss it. So click the links below. Let me know in the comments if you work from home, what it's like for you as a mom to work from home, what that experience has been. Maybe share your tips. Um, share any questions you have for those of us that are already working from home. Let's open up a conversation as moms together in this community. And um, yeah, I don't know how often I'll put out videos, probably one or two a month. I don't have a set day for that yet, which I know is like against YouTube, like dogma or whatever, but it is the life that I lead. This is just a supplemental part of my income. No, it's not even income. This is just a supplemental part of my business where I'm just sharing tips with you and sharing community with you, and that's really it. So um, so that's what's coming up this week. The coaching, either Thursday or Friday. The work from home guide is ready for you to download. So um, yeah, I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.